and welcome to tog fishing um, that fish took about 20 feet of drag and you know it was just a random big fish I was catching shorts uh, about half a dozen shorts in this area and this is the last time I'm gonna use my light spinning rod it simply doesn't have the backbone to stop a big fish and this 1000 size stratic doesn't have the drag power either so as, as much fun as it is um, I don't want to keep losing five five six seven who knows how big that fish is I mean that thing didn't slow down it didn't speed up it just went back to his rock and there's nothing I could do um, anyway here's a cute little male tog and I crushed the barbs on these jigs um, there's still a little nub of a barb left and that's all you need with tog as a handsome guy go all right see you later um yeah these are tog candy jigs they're made by my friend Kevin and excellent colors excellent jig hooks these are mustad ultra point hooks which to me is the perfect tog jigging hook uh, the gammies they sharpen up a little nicer but they bend out you know we're pretty much fishing a lockdown drag and here's my first and only keeper that day um, I basically ran out of green crabs and I, I couldn't find any Asians so I do prefer Asian crabs for fishing Long Island Sound I think that's their primary food source um, and I also like really small Asians it's a single tiny Asian crab on a light quarter ounce jig head that is that's the way to go so anyway here's a tog you see it I'm completely bled out by my most successful bleed out on a tog and the dish we're making today is sort of a Vietnamese or vaguely Southeast Asian tog fritters probably my most um, crowd-pleasing dish to date at least with the catch and cook series um, anyway I'm gonna show you a little bit of the filleting here I, I basically take off uh, one side of the fillet all the way down to the belly and then repeat on the other side this way the fish stays kind of round so it's easier to work with and here I just pop the rib bones off the rib cage you see this one is almost perfectly bled out um, my only regret is uh, this this was a female and you know the the size limit on tog is 16 inches and I was hoping for a slot limit this year there was some talk about that but um, in any case I I uphold my personal slot limit which is between 16 and 20 inches um, I don't want to take fish that's much over 20 inches those those fish take a long time to grow to that size and honestly they don't taste that great you know they're much more difficult to cook their fillets are much thicker and the smaller ones just they're just easier to deal with anyway I cut these to portion and I wrap them in dry paper towels put them in the fridge and here I'm making the batter so the batter needs about an hour to rest so it's one cup cornstarch one cup all-purpose flour uh, salt pepper one egg medium to large egg and a can of you know light beer here I'm using a Sapporo which is like a Japanese light draft beer and you whisk everything out um, make sure there's no lumps cover it and let it rest in the fridge so a dish like this um, there's quite a bit of mise en place involved there's many steps and you're ending up frying it 
So whenever you're doing a deep fry dish, um, especially fish, it's very time sensitive. You know, you don't want it sitting around. Um, you don't want to be frying the fish and any part of your steps are missing and you have to go back. No, by the time you fry the fish, everything should be ready. Should be ready to go, ready to plate, and your guests should be ready to eat. That's the most important thing. Um, people should wait for your food, not the other way around. That's 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 my motto. Anyway, um, here we're just slicing up some shallots. Uh, this this is part of the sort of the fry topping um, for this dish and it's thinly sliced shallots, uh, scallion, most mostly the white part, um, a few slices of ginger, some red chili that I removed most of the seeds and membrane, uh, thinly sliced garlic and all of this will be caramelized down. Um, we're going to add some breadcrumbs to it and it's pretty nice. But here's the chili. I'm just going to run it under water and use your fingers to kind of strip away the seeds and some of the membrane. There's still going to be a little heat but it's not going to be overwhelming. And we just kind of slice thinly. Yep, and there you go. Okay, so here's the lettuce wraps. Uh, this is a Boston bib lettuce. I preferred this over romaine or iceberg. Um, they have nice flavor. They're pretty delicate, so when you're rinsing them, just you know, be gentle. Don't don't bruise the leaves. And that's that's cold water drain them off and get them as dry as possible. All right, so here is the sauce. Um, it's basically roughly equal parts sriracha and honey, um, about a teaspoon or more of lime juice, salt, pepper. And it's a pretty powerful sauce, so you're not going to need a lot. All right, so you just stir that out and um, the most important part here is I'm tasting it off camera and you have to taste your food um, in this case I'm readjusting with a little bit more honey and a touch more acid alright so that's basically your sauce um, wrap it up in saran wrap and set it aside so here we're gonna do our dry hash topping. Um, just some grapeseed oil, a little drizzle of olive oil in a cold pan and lay down your ginger slices which we're going to remove later um, and then the rest of your mirepoix goes in. A good amount of salt and pepper and this is just like um, caramelizing onions. Uh, you start it in a cold pan you let it come up to temperature, that way your shallots, your onions will cook evenly. Um, if you start it in a hot pan, you're going to end up with, you know, nice color, but uncooked onions and shallots, and that's, that's not good. Uh, this whole process takes about 20 minutes, so there's really no rushing it. And you want your heat on medium. So here you see the shallots, the vegetables are turning a little translucent and we're going to add our panko breadcrumbs. This is about the halfway point and the breadcrumbs are going to soak up all that oil and fat and they're going to get nice and crispy along with the shallots and scallions and garlic. So here's, here's about 15-20 minutes. You want to keep stirring them so they don't burn but now you have a really deep sweet flavor we've added no sugar to this um, and yeah and you're basically the last few minutes is just to dry everything out and that's our shallot topping 
All right, so here is the frying oil. I'm using canola. Uh, very important, you don't want to go much over a third of the way in your pot. Uh, you should have a fire extinguisher somewhere in your house in case it goes over. But um, the oil temperature should be around 350, 375. And here I'm just dusting the tog filet and all-purpose flour and then we're dredging it in our batter. So I like using tongs, I find them the easiest. And let most of the batter run off the excess. Now you hold it in the oil for a few seconds to let the batter set before you drop it in. And once it's in you give it just a just a little nudge to make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. And you don't want to overcrowd your pot either. So, you know, I did, I think, the eight or nine tog pieces in two batches. Right here I have a spider to take the pieces out. Now here's the most important part is, um, as soon as your fish comes out of the deep fryer, that's when you season it and immediately you want to salt pepper the fillets when they're hot. Um, that's the only time salt is going to stick to them. You know, if you wait 20 seconds, it's not going to take the seasoning. Alright, so you let that just drain for a little bit and here's the assembly. And remember, you're on a timer. You know, this dish is it needs to be consumed within the next five minutes, ten minutes. So, um, all right, so we plated that. Here's our sriracha honey sauce. There's our fried shallot topping. Um, the fish, obviously. Some lime, some lime slices, and uh, here's the dried bib lettuce. And my cousin's going to demonstrate. So this. And then this, right? Or this first? No, just put the fish on there. Za? Right. Go more za, yeah. Sun. You need za. Oh, damn, son. Sun. Oh, my God. Oh, you're going to die. <laughs> How is that? Good? Mm-hmm. Mm. Let's let's see that. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> all the flavors work, right? Mm -hmm. That's original Canto right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, here's a still photo. Um, it's not the most photogenic dish, but it turned out pretty nice. Um, all the flavors did work. The sriracha sauce and the shallot toppings. Um, yeah, so hopefully you give this a try. Tog is a good candidate for fish and chips. Um, for a dish like this, it has a lot of substance for a white fish. And if you like what you see, please subscribe. And questions, comments, just leave them below. I will try my best to answer all of them.